Hello everybody and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to review Blink-182's self-titled album released in 2003. Uh, as always, I'm going to share a personal anecdote or story about my relationship with an album that I'm very familiar with before I get into the review itself. For this album, this was the first Blink-182 CD that I purchased away from home. I moved away for school 2,000 miles away from everything that I had ever known to live with strangers because I'm an idiot. And uh, yeah, this album came out and did the same thing that I did with Take Off Your Pants and Jacket just two years prior. I went to Best Buy, picked up the CD the day that it came out, and checked it out. I can't remember. I feel like feeling this. I feel like a roommate had let me hear feeling this on Apple Music because the early 2000s was right when Apple Music was started to become a thing. And... He was like, you can listen to the new Blink-182 song right now. You can even preview the first 30 seconds, which even before I created any kind of content online or made any YouTube videos or Patreon videos, I've always been kind of a purist when it came to consuming my entertainment. So I didn't necessarily want to hear just like a preview. I want to either hear the whole song or get to watch the song with the video for the first time or just listen to it on the album, things like that. Um, but, but... I mean, I didn't have a choice. I had already, I'd already heard it. Um, anyway, so that was like my only preview uh, or window into what the album would be. Went to Best Buy. It was a big, it was a big deal because I, I, you know, I went to school in the Southwest in a big uh, metropolitan area with millions of people, and I grew up with a, in a town of like two thousand people. So for me, again, this was I. I I did not have a smartphone. I like barely had a cell phone, but I think I used a map or I can't remember how, but I had to like find a way to get to the best, to the best buy. And it was further than I'd ever gone because I was just going to school and to work and back to the apartment with the roommates. Cause I was like, you know, really overwhelmed and really young. Um, but so yeah, that was like, that's what made me like spread, <laughs> spread my wings and go further than I ever had and drove on these, you know, big uh off ramps that were like stories high above the ground it, it it was crazy anyway got the album and yeah i you know just like every other blink thing up and up until that port up until that part of my life like i loved it i was obsessed with it i loved every track um and well not every i didn't love every track there's one or two tracks that even when i first heard it i was like and yeah, I, I don't need to listen to this over and over um but yeah just listen to it by myself and and it was also kind of the first time, like, like I, my roommates weren't entirely into Blink-182, so I couldn't really share that excitement, and I was away from my friends that I had known at, at, at my hometown, so um, it was kind of tough to, uh, I guess tough, but it was different and, and strange and kind of, you know, growing up to, I'm just experiencing, you know, things on my own now. Uh, eventually, when I did go back either Christmas on Christmas break or when I went back permanently, um, I did reconnect with my friends who had heard the CD and uh, yeah, but I, I really can't describe to people like, and honestly, you know, the world is so different over the last 15 or 20 years that I even find within myself struggling to remember how it was, you know, like, we weren't on YouTube every day. We weren't on social media every day. We, I did not have a smartphone. You know, I barely had a functioning phone at all. I didn't even need a cell phone until I moved away from my family. And uh, so it's like, I didn't, you know, nowadays, these days, my friends that are across the country, talk to them every day. Text, phone call, online gaming, high-speed internet, you know, fiber internet makes that really seamless. It's like we live right next to each other. But when I moved away, it was a big deal. I like went months without seeing or talking to people, you know, that were like some of my best friends. And uh, so it was kind of strange to like return to that after being away. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so the, the, the closest personal story that I can get is that it's the first album of theirs that I bought when I was away from home. And it was, it kind of was a, uh, it bridged a gap of me reconnecting with these kids that I had moved away from that I, when I came back, you know, on vacation, like, oh, what do you, you know, what are your favorite Blink songs from the new album? Did you get it? Things like that. Um, and actually, 
I was so busy with school and work and didn't have cable and, and you know, really just kind of watched movies and played games on my free time that it wasn't until I came home on Christmas break that I even realized feeling this had a video and I got to see some of the video. I was like, what? Anyway, yeah. So let's get into the review proper. Uh, just as a reminder, for more, my format, I like to talk about music, lyrics, and melody kind of in that order. So let's start with music. I have to be honest, you know, b both back when it released and now re-listening to it, for the, I mean, this is the first time that I re-listened to this album in easily over 10 years, like start to finish a couple of times for review purposes. I would go back and like listen to my two or three favorites, but I did not listen, I do not listen to this album all the way through regularly and haven't in several years. Um, but the one thing about the music that always kind of bummed me out and still bums me out to this day is in this era, Tom was obsessed with this chord progression that I just kind of personally in my own head call the take my breath away chord progression, which is like A, A flat, G flat, A flat. So if you're on frets on a guitar, it's five, four, two, four, five, four, two, four. And there are different variations or iterations of, of this note spacing and this chord progression used in about a third of the album. I mean, I miss you, violence, down, I'm lost without you. Um, maybe even a little parts of obvious, I'm not sure, but just a lot of it, I just was like, He's stuck on this chord progression and he's putting it in every song and it's annoying me because one of my favorite things as a fan and as a self-taught musician has always been the riffs, the the fun little guitar hooks that Tom or that Blink was known for that, that Tom would write. And this one, it didn't really have a lot of that. It just had a lot of the, you know, again, the, the take my breath away. Um, but besides that, um, I thought musically, like this is, was, you know, really impressive as I was growing up with the band, I I thought that it, you know, this was the furthest away from anything that I had heard from Buddha, Cheshire Cat, Dude Ranch, Enema, you know, Take Off. Now to get to self-titled, self-titled was the first time where I was like, this sound, this actually does sound different. There's uh, a lot more production. There's, they have like get, uh, uh, Robert Smith from The Cure as, as a guest vocalist the interludes, the speaking poem stuff, you know, the piano, um, and then the, uh, f you know, finally singing about other things, which I'll get to in a second. But, um, yeah, I liked this. I liked the sound of it, the production value of it. And I thought the the drumming was like, you know, by Travis was of course amazing on this album. It just really, you know, in the high energy songs, you feel the energy and in the more serious songs, you kind of feel the somberness and I get, you believe, I, at least for me, I believed it a little bit more and I still believe it a little bit more in hindsight because, you know, they were actually getting older. It wasn't the early nineties anymore. It was the early to mid two thousands and they'd been a band for a really long time. And it's like, what the hell else do we have to say or what can we do? Um, so this really did feel like, you know, a, a sort of transformational, uh, semi-progressive album, you know, from them, as far as they go, musically speaking, talking about, you know, the notes that they're playing, the instruments that they're using and how, and how it's being produced. This was kind of the, you know, the, 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 the edgiest, um, that Blink had been up to that point without, you know, losing their personality without losing what they were known for, of you know, the topics that they sing about and the catchy melodies and things like that. Um, you know, violence was like a, had like a really, when I first heard it, you know, I was like, oh my God, this is such a gnarly badass riff. And now like re-listening to it, it's like, he's just holding on the same note for like a solid minute straight. <laughs> like it just, it's like, I kind of wish there was a little bit more to it than that, but, um, you know, obviously there are some strong riffs on the album. You know, I miss you feeling this, uh, the build up uh, to the chorus of down, I think is musically really great. I do always get bummed out. I feel like the chorus and down is this big build up that you think is going to smash through, but then they pull back and it, it still bothers me to this day. I really feel like they're building up to this kind of amazing chorus payoff but it's a strange chorus because it's like the buildup is the chorus and then it just drops out and Mark says down a hundred times. 
so yeah, musically, I think this is a really uh, solid album. And there's, a, you know, again, there's a variety of tempos, variety of tones and topics that um, even though it's all, again, within that sound and within that wheelhouse, there's a lot of a little bit more experimentation that is really enjoyable. Now let's talk about the lyrics. The songwriting here in this album, again, I, I really feel like it was a little bit more of a mature version of uh, things that we were familiar with. Um, they did add some new topics. Uh, the song Go, for example, had is this amazing heartfelt dark storytelling about and i almost feel like it's maybe true where mark was a, like witnessing his mother in abuse in an abusive relationship and trying to get away from that situation uh tom wrote a song i think asthenia is the one that it's called about an astronaut in space looking down at the world and, and you know the song you know should i go back should i go back should i it's it's this like astronaut pondering whether or not to return to earth or just float around in space forever so they did finally start to get more explorative in my personal opinion i don't i don't know this to be true i'm not sure but in my personal opinion just based on uh how things have gone since the hiatus and the breakups and the reforming and the breaking up again things like that i just get this suspicion this hunch that mark really wants to always do the old Blink-182 sound. I feel like I've heard him quoted in an interview like, a Blink song needs to sound like a Blink song. And I feel like Tom has this pull to experiment and change and do different things, which is how you get Boxcar Racer, which is how you get Angels and Airwaves, which is how you get Neighborhoods, which I'll be reviewing next, you know? Um, and so I feel like, you know, this album is kind of at odds with itself because it, it you know it exists in two different worlds it exists in the mark world of blink songs need to sound like blink and it exists in the tom world of i need to experiment and be dark and serious and dye my hair black pretty sure tom dyed his hair black for this era as well and wore black nail polish because he's totally emo so but, but yeah, so I, I did appreciate the songwriting and I don't know, I to be honest, like I'm still to this day, I'm kind of mixed about it. I'm like, on one hand, I really like how edgy and mature and different a lot of the, the, the phrasing and the lyrics are. And on the other hand, I'm like, yeah, this kind of sounds more like one of Tom's side projects than Blink-182. Um, you know, hearing Mark <clears throat> shout you know, first of all, I'll tell that really per what I believe is maybe real and, and personal story about, you know, witnessing, you know, kind of parental abuse is kind of insane. But then on top of that, uh, to hear, you know, the things that he shouts in easy, easy target and Stockholm syndrome, um, just the subject matter, it sounds for some reason it fits Tom and it sounds strange for Mark. Like I'm sure they're cut from the same cloth and they grew up together and they're probably very similarly, you know, very similar personality wise, which is why they, you know, grew up together and started a band together. But I don't know. There's, you know, I think my perception of Tom because of his side projects is that the harder edge stuff makes more sense for him than it does Mark. Cause Mark always had that kind of clean cut pop punk, good time image. Um, but it, that's also really funny because even though Tom has since divorced and remarried, at the time that he was writing all these love songs and pining songs and breakup songs, like he was like happily married for like over 10 years. <laughs> so it's funny that, you know, that image kind of worked on me. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely dig, you know, the songwriting, the, the choruses, the subject matter. Um, it really is fun to go back and re-listen to um and again the, you know the images in your head every time i hear i miss you i just said head when i should have said yed right um the images that i miss you gives you like i always picture a spider you know i always picture halloween and christmas like i get images in my head when i when i hear their songs and i think that's a testament to the strength um of the lyrics um the, yeah they do a really good job of uh, you know it does Kind of follow you know a pattern of of a lot of blink songs but again all music follows a pattern where it is kind of you know intro verse pre-chorus chorus then redo the intro do the next verse and then there's a little bit of a bridge or a breakdown and then we do the chorus one more time like um it is kind of expected but you don't know what you're going to get in that format almost like filmmaking i guess you know filmmaking follows the structure the three-act structure but you don't know you know a pl plot point one is different depending on what movie you're watching 
Um, so yeah, lyrically, this is uh, a really enjoyable album to listen to. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's definitely on the stronger side because I don't, I'm, I'm trying not to spoil future thoughts, you know, no future spoilers. But what I'll say is, you know, up to this point, um, it's been mostly juvenile. And when they've dabbled in the series, it is not it just hasn't clicked because I knew kind of how young they were and knew, um, I don't know, it just didn't feel as sincere as some of the other growing up stuff because they were growing up. But here with this album, like they had grown up, they'd grown up, they'd been famous for a while and they had some stuff to say. And, uh, there was an edge to it that I, that I, uh, still enjoy to this day. Uh, so now let's talk about melody. Not a lot of complaints here. Um, there's still a lot of very catchy, melodies on this album and you know for me melody really matters like you know, each person is different um and i know that there's a lot of like music fans out there that you know enjoy different things about music they might enjoy a really technical guitar solo or a really impressive drum fill or a bass line that just slaps right um but for me like you know, I, I really think melody is very important because you, you know, music is an audible experience, a listening experience. You're literally using sound to communicate everything. You don't have pictures, you don't have video, you don't have, you know, drawings or, um, you know, behind the scenes details, trivia. You literally just have these three minutes with this basically one major human sense to communicate everything you want to communicate a story you want to tell an emotion you want to evoke um and so uh, you know a melody a, a sequence of sound that gets stuck in your head that you can't get rid of i think i personally think that that's very important in really any kind of all kind of music you know some of the best metallica and van halen that i like whether it's the music side or the singing side it just gets its hooks in you um, because it's catchy. Uh, and so, yeah, on this album, there it is not lacking for melody. The verses are very strong. The choruses are very strong. Um, there's really, a, you know, maybe Easy Target you know, is not that great, you know. On But really, even Easy Target, I feel like the verse is pretty good, Tom's part. Um, the chorus, where they're just saying the things they'll let Holly do to them and it's like really violent and kind of sounds unnatural for Mark to sing has never really worked for me. Um, but yeah, very catchy album. It's really, it's really easy to recommend the album to a lot of different people just based on the sounds. Obviously feeling this, I miss you, always is pretty catchy. Um, I think down is super catchy. Yeah, I, I, I can't, Asthenia, yeah, like pretty much every song on the album has something to appreciate from a melodic perspective. Um, and again, just speaking about the band in general, they do, they have always done a really good job of the balancing act of what songs does Mark sing? What songs does Tom sing? When do we both sing? And when do we har harmonize with each other? You know, I think Stockholm Syndrome is probably the, one of the best examples of their alternating singing that I've heard in their entire discography. Um, I liked that song right away, and, and I still like this song to this day. It's definitely one of the best songs on the album. Um, so yeah, you really can't go wrong with most of the tracks on this one. This one, um, it, you know, kind of breaks away. It, you know, it grows up, it matures in a justified way and it sounds edgy in a believable way, ex you know, except for the fact that I personally have like this clean cut image of Mark for some reason, I don't know why, you know, but that's just, that's just me and that's just my opinion and that's what you're here for if you're watching this video. Uh, so let me cover my favorite riff, my favorite lyric and my favorite melody from this album before I give it its overall rating. Total shocker, my favorite guitar riff on the album is feeling this. Uh, it's so simple, it's so catchy, and it's really e it's really easy to play. I'm really glad that it's easy to play because it's so fun to play. Um, and but I would say a, a runner up to that is all of this. Um, I really like the the acoustic guitar in all of this. 
the chords that slide around, how it pays off with that bass drum and that bell at the end of every uh, verse. Yeah, I just think all of this is like a, a really, maybe it's not underrated. I feel like it's probably a fan favorite, but all of this is a really good guitar hook that's really fun to play. Uh, favorite lyric, this one was, was really hard. There, there's a lot of solid lyrics here, but there's not something that, there wasn't really something that landed for me the way that like, you know, certain lyrics off of Enema or Take Off do, where I still think about, you know, and that's about the time she walked away from me. Like, I, you know, a billion times in my head, I've said that. Um, so for this one, I've got to give it up to the feel in this chorus. You know, fate fell short this time, smile fades in the summer. Summer and wanna don't even rhyme, but it just sounds perfect. It's like damn near a perfect chorus, right? Um, but I will say the runner up is the last contagious victim of this plague between us from Stockholm Syndrome. That line has always stuck out to me, uh, both when I first heard this album and in revisiting it for the review. And again, especially hearing, you know, Mark talk like that and sing like that, it's just so funny. Uh, favorite melody, of course, I've got to go with the feeling this chorus. Um, it is, you know, what I call shorthand C, G, A minor, F, although in this case, I think it's E, B minor, C sharp, A. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that chorus is definitely like, I think about all the time, maybe, maybe even the whole song feeling this because the Tom part with Mark saying feeling this underneath it, get stuck in my head quite often too. The runner up for favorite melody, this one took me a while. I was like, what do I, you know, what melody can, can I recall on my own the easiest without listening to the song that I think gets stuck in my head, you know, the best. And that what I came up with was uh, I miss you, but the verse, the storytelling of Mark in the first half, Tom in the second half, you know, Tom's where are you? Like we've, you know, I think fans of, of the band all get excited over, over that song and about that part. And I, I mean, I came to it on my own before it was a single. When I heard the album, I didn't know what the singles were gonna be. You can have a guess, but you don't know. So yeah, I would go with the, the verse of I Miss You. So overall, what do I give the Blink-182 self-titled album? I give it a nine out of 10. I think it's slightly stronger than Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, a little bit more mature, a little edgier, some risk taking. Um, the interludes didn't necessarily work for me in repeat listening. I really liked them, you know, as a, like a full album listening experience the first one or two times that I heard it. But really ever since then, I have had no cause or reason or need to listen to those interludes again. I just skip them and, and go to the real tracks. Uh, and then Easy Target is just such a strange, weird, filler track like i almost wish easy target was an instrumental with the hard rock uh distorted uh version of that guitar riff that leads right into all of this because i've always loved how the easy target song becomes all of this where it slows down you remove the distortion and now it's a different song i've always thought that was really cool so yeah nine out of ten is my uh, official rating on the Super Jerk scale for the Blink-182 self-titled album. Gonna interrupt the video that you're watching really quick here just to tell you, if you haven't liked the video, go ahead and like it right now. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe right now. And if you haven't commented yet, go ahead and comment right now. And if you haven't bought my book yet for $4.99 only on Amazon, go ahead and buy it right now, please. All right, thanks, bye. Hello and welcome to Jersh Ranks. This is my tier list series where I rank tracks on albums. For this video, of course, I'm doing Blink-182 self-titled album. Uh, so that this album has 15 tracks on it. So I'm going to say my favorite, uh, my favorite tracks in order from least favorite to absolute favorite. Again, it's not an exact science. It's just you know how I'm feeling this. Okay, uh, and I'll share a couple quick thoughts about each track. So we'll get through this quickly. Uh, so 15 tracks. Number 15, The Fallen Interlude. Number 14, Stockholm Syndrome Interlude. And number 13, Easy Target. I said it in the base review, if you missed that, that yeah, the interludes, they're fun on a first or second time listen, but they're not, there's not a lot there to want to revisit as a, as a Blink fan. Um, obviously the Fallen Interlude has great 
drumming by Travis, but every, almost every Blink track has great drumming by Travis. So I could hear Travis do some awesome drum shit, but then also hear a full song around it. I don't need an interlude to do that. Uh, easy Target. I've just never really jived with that one. It's, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just don't like the song. I don't think, I don't think the melody's that great. I think it's weird what Mark sings in the chorus. The best part about Easy Target is that it leads into all of this. Uh, number 12, I'm Lost Without You. Number 11, Go. And number 10, Asthenia. Uh, I'm Lost Without You. I just felt like, um, I don't know. It just felt a little unnecessary. I feel, it, it, I, first of all, it's the exact same chord progression as I Miss You. Um, and I Miss You is, is kind of, is a way better song than I'm Lost Without You. I just feel like it just was, they had this idea in their head, or maybe Tom had this idea in his head. This is very much a Tom song. Like there's no way Mark had, <laughs> Mark wanted a damn thing to do with this, I feel. But um, it's like they had this vision in their head to go out with this big, epic, long six minute song that has these bells and like um, cyclical um, repeating, um, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is. It's it, the best way that I can describe it is it sounds like the music from Resident Evil 4. There's like this, this, a scythe or a bell that just, it sounds like it's going down a water drain. It repeats over and over. Anyway, it's unnecessarily long, kind of like the explanation for this song. Um, Go, I love, love, like the, the rawness and the authenticity and like the heartbreak in the lyrics. I wish the lyrics of Go we're in a better song. I don't think there's anything impressive or memorable musically here. Um, Mark just kind of screaming, I don't want to know a hundred times in a row. It just kind of grates on me. Um, it did then when I was a kid and it does to this day as an adult. Uh, Asthenia, I love the idea of getting out of the comfort zone and trying to find a different perspective to challenge the songwriting and the musicianship. And this was a, an early precursor to the Angels and Airwaves stuff, I'm sure, because there's like NASA audio logs and it's about space exploration and all the things that Tom would end up being obsessed with for the next 15 years kind of was hinted at in this song. So solid song, not one I go to too often. Number nine, obvious. Number eight, always. Number seven, here's your letter. Uh, I know that always was a single and it got a video and the video was actually really cool. It's one of their, one of their better videos, the, the, the triple split, seeing them all do the different things. Very clever video. I remember. Um, and again, I know they were trying to go for like an eighties love song vibe and they succeeded, but it's just not one that, that, that I, that I, uh, listen to very often. Um, I just feel like you know, they have a lot of love songs. I feel like they have a, a little bit better love songs in their discography than always. So I go there when I'm in an especially heartfelt mood for my dark heart. Uh, obvious um, is, a, is a, a fun one. It's strange. It's, it's, it's one that like when I was younger, I used to skip it. But then in re-listening to it as an adult, I was like, oh, this is one of, this is a solid, this is a solid mid-tier track on the album. This is not skippable at all. And I still remember to this day, like when that bass kicks in at the end for the semi, you know, Blink-182's version of a guitar solo, um, that like, it was very powerful, very strong bass at the end of Obvious. And here's your letter. I just, re I, I just really like that song. I think the melody, I think it's super catchy as shit. I love the tempo. I love when all the, uh, the guitar falls out and it's just Mark singing with the bass and a simple Travis beat behind it. Uh, I like how the chorus does like, a half chorus and doesn't do the payoff, but then does the payoff later and finishes the melody. Uh, I think that's really fun as well. Number six, violence. Number five, down. Number four, Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, number six, violence. Again, it's one of those take, take my breath away chord progressions where I'm always bummed when I hear the guitar in the chorus, but I've always, I instantly loved and still loved the all basically speaking verse with Tom and Mark talking really fast in synchronization. Um, that's always like really fun and exciting to hear. And the, the kind of finger snaps and like keychain sound underneath it uh, was really experimental and still kind of stands out as like a really unique track. Um, something that I that I'm not a big fan of with violence is um, when he says forever and after, for my money, Tom 
you already had your forever phrase and that's first date let's make this last forever and ever let's make this last forever so when you say you kill me forever and after i'm like bro dude dude bro bro dude we already talked about forever don't do that again <laughs> so it always like kind of takes me out of the song i'm like oh forever and ever sounds a lot better than forever and after um and again like violence what does that even mean you know uh down really love down uh again i i feel like down could have been like a top three blink 182 chorus for me if they would have paid off the build up i'm still to this day bummed that it's a, it's a build up chorus that it doesn't actually go somewhere it sounds like it's getting ready to slam home and then it just falls away uh stockholm syndrome which sidebar i feel like stockholm syndrome as a thing where like victims get accustomed to their perpetrators their kidnappers and they get attached to them i feel like that that was mostly disproven to be a myth um but aside from that this is one of their best songs. Uh, I love the back and forth between Mark and Tom. I love the melody. I, it's it's really, and again, I, this is on purpose, of course. Um, um, I think they were trying to capture the idea of, of being captured and not being able to escape and being caught in an endless cycle because the beginning and end of the song is the chorus. The song starts with the chorus and ends with the chorus. And then the whole middle of the song is this two or three verses with just Mark. And to this day, I still think it's like one of their most successful experiments from a song structure point of view. Um, but yeah, of course, super catchy uh, guitar and melody uh, throughout that whole song. Number three, I miss you. Number two, all of this. And number one, of course, feeling this. Let's talk about, I'll talk about feeling this in a moment. So I miss you. Definitely overplayed. Definitely in all the small things scenario where I genuinely loved it. It was one of my favorite tracks. I mean, it's still one of my favorite tracks. It's number three. Um, but people got obsessed with it. People, you know, over and over and over playing it. Over and over. Anyway. Um, it's a future Blink song. Uh, there's just something about it that, number one, yeah, the guitar riff. Just thinking about take my breath away and number two the back half of i miss i miss you don't waste your time on me you're already the voice inside my head that dun 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 for some reason that it always reminds me of somewhere over the rainbow just a faster pace uh anyway i miss you great song uh all of the strengths of blink 182 travis doing something interesting in a slower song um, keeping your attention with and keeping the tempo and the beat of the song. Mark and Tom playing to their strengths. It's a great Blink song. All of this, all of this is, is a really phenomenal song from the production value to the lyrics to the melody. Uh, even if Robert Smith from The Cure, which you guys will have to let me know if I should react to The Cure someday. I only know three or four of the songs from The Cure. But even if they didn't have Robert Smith as a guest singer, if Mark or Tom or both of them were singing this song, it would still be a fantastic song. The, the, the mood of it, the tempo of it, the drums, everything. Love the song. And last but not least, another this, Feeling This. Feeling This is an all-time Blink song. It gives Damn It a run for its money, in my opinion. Like, it's again, it's another CGA minor F song. Um, super catchy, memorable riff. Uh, just timeless. I, I mean, I've probably heard it over a thousand times in my life and I could probably hear it over a thousand more. Like, it's just a song I don't get tired of. And it, I don't know, like it reminds me of my youth. It reminds me of my age. It reminds me of, of happy times. It reminds me of sad times. Like, feeling this is a great song. It's just a great song, like personally my attachment to it. But then on top of it, stepping outside of my attachment, and just listening to the production value, the, just the, you know, I got no regret right now, the way that it just kicks in full force uh, with that amazing riff and, you know, Mark and Tom bouncing off each other, the strange, like the, the screaming chorus where like Tom screams 
the chorus. And I remember like they recorded this album. They like rented a house from a family and like he's just basically screaming at the top of his lungs in, a, in an empty room in this house to try to get that chorus. Just, yeah. Love that song. Love this album for sure. Was really fun to revisit. And uh, I'm glad that I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I'm doing this series, even if it doesn't get a lot of views or a lot of interest. It's fun for me to walk down memory lane and prepare myself for new Blink-182 that I haven't heard yet. Um, so I definitely love this album. If you like this video, make sure you like it, comment, let me know what are some of your thoughts on Blink-182 as a band, if you've been following along through the album journey with me, and what would your ranks be? What would your tier list be for the tracks in this album? Let me know. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Since you made it all the way to the end, I'm going to give you some free advice. Number one, leave a like. Number two, comment if you haven't already. And number three, if you're new, you should subscribe. Last but not least, if you really want to support me, you should buy my book. It's only $4.99 on Amazon. Check it out.